105 Network. This is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Jimmy Kelly's Steakhouse is Nashville's oldest fine restaurant, dating all the way back to 1934. But the Kelly family has a rich history in our city that actually dates back to pre-Civil War days. The current restaurant's proprietor is Mike Kelly. He's compiled a book of all the tales from his family's history. Mike Kelly's our guest on Inside Politics today. Welcome, Mike. Thank you for coming on the program. Pat, it's great to be with you. Uh, this is a wonderful book. There's so many great <laughs> stories in it, and I'm trying to tell them all. But uh, in addition to running the restaurant, you must be the family historian. Well, uh, historian is maybe a little strong. <laughs> Keeper of stories <laughs> in the Irish tradition is kind of more more in line. <laughs> now, all family historians or those who collect those stories learn their history usually from older relatives. Who told you all these things? I was really lucky to be in business with my dad and my uncle, Uncle Jimmy. And at the end of each night, we would have dinner. And naturally, they would, being big storytellers and me being interested in our family history, they, they would relate all these hysterical hijinks that the family did throughout the year. Uh, the book is entitled A Generous Poor, Tall Tales from the Back Room and Jimmy Kelly's. And this really has a lot to go back with the fact that as, as long as you've been in the hospitality business, you've really been in a lot of ways in the whiskey business. We've definitely been in the whiskey business and, and it leans to that. But it's also, uh, the generous poor is also that the city of Nashville has supported us for 88 years. That, that we think that's kind of special. Now, you, you, your ancestors in Ireland really began, began a lot of this, particularly the whiskey making. In fact, your great-grandfather, James Kelly, when he left to come to America and during the famine, uh, his father gave him some, 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 um, some um, um, copper, co copper, copper, copper tubing. tubing. And that copper tubing became very important for many years over the, uh, it was actually the tubing that you used to make a steel. To make a steel. That's the, the key the key part, the hardest thing you had to come by. You, you can come by a pot anywhere, but to have that gooseneck you, to make whiskey was important. Now James, um, the last time he saw his mother and father, the last time he saw some of his other siblings, his sister did come with him over here along with another brother. But the sister died. She was on one of those coffin ships. That's I mean, it was right. so insane, so overcrowded and unsanitary. It's just amazing what our ancestors do to, to come to this country. It, it is amazing. It's, it's kind of similar to what, what a lot of people are going through today to get here. Now, James was lucky when he got off the boat. Uh, he had a job offered him almost immediately to come to Nashville. Did he even know where Nashville was? He had no idea. It's just somebody asked him to go to work, and he came to Nashville to work on the bridge. Uh, he worked on the bridge. It's now the Woodland Street Bridge. It's not Correct. the same one, but it's the not one that the was, built. One. It was the first yeah. bridge built across the Cumberland River here in Nashville. Now, one of his early friends was also quite fortuitous for the cut, for the, uh, uh, the, the, the the family going on. It was Felix Motlow. Uh, they became friends. They even enlisted together in, in the Confederate Army during the Civil War. Uh, your your great grandfather lost an eye at the Battle of Gaines Mill in Virginia, and uh, Felix was captured at uh, Gettysburg. Yeah. Um, and so that that friendship became very important over the years, including right after the war when he met um, Motlow's brother-in-law, Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, yeah. He married uh, Jack's sister, Vanetta, uh, Vanetta Daniels, and. Uh, and Jack moved in with Felix and Panetta and lived with them for a long time. Now, there were times also since he'd come to Tennessee, he began making some of that whiskey for himself here, uh, Mr. Kelly, James Kelly. Uh, I mean, he had to make it at night, right? Because the revenue was Revenues, very Revenue, yeah, he had. He and he learned how to do it by moonlight. By moonlight. <laughs> 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 um, the the now, things you had to do to, to beat a family those days. Now, after the war and after his later years, he finally began, James finally began making and selling ice. That was, that's, that's not like much of a business today. Day, but it was very important back in those days because otherwise there wouldn't be any way to keep things cool. There was no refrigeration. The gentleman's quarter downtown was rollicking, and so that that was his his run up and down the Second Avenue. Now James Kelly died in 1904, but by that time his son John Kelly was very active, and he got offered a chance one day. In addition to the very successful ice business that was going on right now, he also got a chance to buy a saloon. I guess that was really the beginnings of the hospitality business for the Kelly family. It, it was, and it was uh, for a nickel, you could get a beer and take a pass at the sandwich bar. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's, you know, that's what, what we didn't have McDonald's. <laughs> you know? Now, make a note of the ice business because it comes important later on for the company, or for, for the family going forward. Now, John Kelly 
probably saw something was coming that was going to endanger both his ice business and his saloon business, and that was Prohibition. And Prohibition came to Tennessee long before it came it, to it the did. rest of the country. So he knew there was going to be a problem. He went to church one day, the new cathedral down on West End Avenue. And of all people who got in the pew next to him was the bishop. And the bishop, he was trying to figure out what to do with himself, how, what was going to do, because he knew he was going to lose both his businesses. And the bishop gave him some pretty good advice. He, he gave some good, real good advice. He advised him that a man's first responsibility is taking care of his family. So uh, that's how he, got, he decided to go into the whiskey business. So John decided his priority would be his family. He rearranged his business models. Uh, the saloon sued closed. He soon basically lost a lot of his ice business. Uh, he decided to become a bootlegger. He actually yep. went out across the country to the Caribbean, to Canada, to find new sources of liquor, and he found them. He found it, yeah. And he found his was a little bit different. He did not operate a speakeasy in, where a lot of that whiskey was probably not very healthy and could have been actually lethal in a lot of cases. He actually made it clear he was going to get uh, actually brand liquor. Yeah, he, he, he brought bonded whiskey only uh, that was sealed. And, and that's how you knew whether it was good whiskey or, or bad whiskey. One of the most fascinating parts of the book is the characters that he had to deal with. And, and lady, a um, woman in Jamaica was very, was very, very interesting. A lot of other people really like to read that part of it. Uh, he also himself um, smuggled some liquor. And I think the most one that you go into some detail is when he came across the river in Detroit to come from Canada. Well, that was that, he almost got in. Um, almost lost his got, life that yeah. night. Yeah. To, that, that, that was, a, uh, they, they said it was like a roadway back and forth across the, the river, the frozen river. Now, perhaps the most famous or infamous character, and it's in the first chapter of your book, is that uh, your grandfather got a chance to meet Al Capone. And Al Capone made him an offer he almost couldn't refuse, but he found a way to refuse it, but to also still have a business relationship with Capone. Well, he, he, he got out of the deal by saying he would always buy his whiskey from there on board, even at a little in inflated price. Now, in the early days of the Prohibition, uh, John drove himself the whiskey back. He got, got, for a while, it was still available in Kentucky. And he was able to bring it bring back, it back here, in. here. And at that point, he also went into the, the car business, more or less. He got a fleet of packers and employees, dressed them up very nice, and they never had a trouble bringing it down here. No, well, they, they roll across the river in, at dark and turn their lights off and pull into the uh, warehouse. Mike Kelly's our guest. He's a proprietor of Jimmy Kelly's Restaurant, Nashville's oldest uh, fine restaurant in Nashville, dating back to 1934. He's written a book about all his family's experiences. About to continue our conversation with Mike after this break. This is a